Okay, I think we're on. Out oh, there it goes, live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second ever live stream. I'm glad Ashley is joining us this time. Last time I was on a, keep banging the table, on a remote location, and she wasn't able to be with me, but here we are. Um, we'll just wait a couple minutes before we get started, make sure we have everything set up correctly. I wonder if there would be any improvement if I set this up here. So I just got the chat open now. I see people are coming on in. Um, Mike Pratt from the Pratt Family Homestead is our moderator for today for tonight and Mike's going to be helping me out with comments and questions and he's going to be sending them to me directly so I don't have to scroll through all the questions on the side trying to find them as we're going and it, it wastes a lot of time so uh, he's going to be helping me out with that and again if if we miss a question if if uh, Mike gets tied up and we're talking about something else and we don't get to your question, just post it again. Mike will probably catch him the second, maybe third time, and we'll eventually get to it. But um, we're trying to not to take up too much time tonight, so I'm not sure how long it'll be going through all this. But let me just real quick see who's here. We have Robert Hall. How's it going, Robert? Donnie, Mud Pie Girl. Matthew Butter King, or as I like to call, Butter. <clears throat> we Tree Bonsai. Yes, Esther and Melanie are live on, right now in another window. I did not realize that until about 30 minutes ago when Mike reminded me that they were doing this and I, we had already scheduled this. So I apologize for any conflict. You can uh, either check out their video and come back on our replay or vice versa. But the actual, the, one of the main things we wanted to talk about tonight um, is what's going on with Road to the Farm, Melanie and Esther Emery from Fouchomatic. They are uh, right now leaking out their information about doing a book giveaway. Esther Emery just came out with a new book and she has a list here of all the other folks that are involved in doing a book, a book giveaway for her uh, new book. It's called What Falls from the Sky. And it's, um, let's see if I can pull this up here real quick and, and read you real quickly. Okay, What Falls from the Sky is Esther Emery's lyrical, sharply insightful account of a year without internet and the God, grace, and recovery of personal identity that she found offline. And for those of you that don't know, Esther, let me see if I can get back to you. Here we are. For those of you that you don't for those of you that don't know of Esther Emery, she is Carla Emery's daughter. Carla has the um, Country Living Encyclopedia, it's that huge book and should be in every homesteader uh, library. Uh, anyway, that's her mom and Esther just wrote this book. She has a blog and she also has, I think, two YouTube channels, Fouchomatic YouTube channel and Esther Emery, which is her personal channel. And they are off-grid um, homesteading, her and her husband, uh, down in South Idaho. So she's a fellow Idahoan. And she is doing the the Great April Easter Egg Hunt giveaway tour. And starting today with Melanie over at Road to the Farm, another fellow Idahoan. She's down in South Idaho. Um, starting today, each, uh, each day up until April 15th, a YouTube channel and or a blog that Esther is affiliated with is going to be doing a giveaway of her book. Uh, and so we wanted to let you know and read off this list really quickly so you guys can enter in as many uh, of these contests each day, each giveaway every day to, to improve your chances of winning. So right now, Melanie at Road to the Farm is, she's live right now. And again, I apologize for the conflict. Uh, they're going live right now with their, give, <clears throat> their giveaway. 
April 2nd is Lumna Acres YouTube channel, Farmer, Farmer Mima on April 3rd, Deep South Homestead on April 4th, Andy of Andalit on April 5th, that's a blog, uh, Linda McKillop, um, I guess that's a blog, Go for Green Living, Daniel Smith over at um, the Go for Green Living YouTube channel on April 7th. April 8th, Big Bear Homestead is doing a live YouTube show uh, for their giveaway. April 9th, our good friends, the Pratt Family Homestead, will be doing theirs. Uh, April 10th, another friend, Tangie the Caver's wife, uh, will be doing hers on her YouTube channel. Uh, a blogger, Kara Meredith on April 11th. The Fuel Homestead, uh, she, this is Amy Shule from the Fuel Homestead. She has a YouTube channel and a blog, but I think the focus of her giveaway is gonna be on her blog, it seems. Exploring Peace, another blog on April 13th. A Farm Girl in Making, April 14th, uh, which is a Facebook and Instagram blog. And Batting Cleanup, April 15th, the Grass-Fed Homestead will be participating and doing a, a giveaway. So we'll have more information out about how you can enter later. We can't start our contest until the 15th, but I want to let you guys know about it, that it's going on, and you can check out all these other channels. And I will try to leave links to everybody else's thing going on. Or, I'll, you know, a, a better... A blog post about it that has all the links. I think a better way is if I link to... This is on a web page, on Esther's page. So I can send a link to this, and then you guys can go link to everybody else and go ahead and enter in a copy. We were supposed to get our, our books in the mail today. They did not come, so hopefully we'll get them on Monday because I'd like to read the book so I can do more to help promote it. So that is the book giveaway... And I just went over to the chats, and I see Peoria Dude is in the house. Peoria Dude, if you guys have not checked out his new YouTube channel, I highly advise you getting over there and subscribing. Help support him. He's a big supporter of our channel, as well as just about every other homesteading channel out there. And his, and his channel, sorry, we're on a little table here, and it keeps wobbling every time I bounce on him. But <clears throat> you kick it. And when I kick it. And uh, anyway, so Puria dude, his whole channel right now, until he can start getting into farming, uh, he's basically promoting everybody else's YouTube channel by giving little highlight snips and teasers, like Entertainment Tonight style, um, you know, top 20 videos of the week in homesteading. So it's a really great exposure. Digest. Yeah, it's a really great exposure for a lot of other um, homesteaders and smaller YouTube channels trying to develop their brand. So thanks for doing that period, dude. Um, I'm going to click back over and see if we have any questions so far about the book giveaway from Mike. Okay, so nothing over there yet. I'll keep checking back. Uh, see if we have any questions regarding that. I wish this were laid out a little better. So I need two computers. Okay. <clears throat> Questions? Sutton, Sutton's Days is in here, Portuguese Prepper. Welcome, guys. Okay, so uh, the next thing we wanted to tell you guys about is the broiler chickens. Uh, you had heard Ashley talk about that and our goals. That's something that we wanted to add. And um, we find little buddy is <laughs> running around the house and we have a window here and a window there and he keeps going back and forth. Can you say hi little buddy? Say hi everyone. Hi everyone. Say how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> if you if you go get dressed and get some shoes on you can come out here in a little bit. Yeah, no? Can, I can take it from here. You want to take it from there? <laughs> He has a hoe oh. in his right hand. He's ready <laughs> a garden to garden. Hoe, and he's in his Maybe pajamas. Maybe we should start with so. that topic. No, let's let's do the broiler. We're talking about that. Chickens. So. Yeah. No so, waffles, just chickens. So uh, we were debating what kind of broilers we wanted to to go with, and our friend Peoria dude, he is a big advocate. He's really into chicken breeding. He's he's corresponding with me. Um, a lot, like lots of paragraphs and comments about chicken breeding, and he he's a big advocate of heritage 
you know, slower growing old style chickens. And I like that too. Um, but we are trying to also balance that with a need for quick chicken, right? Yeah, because our growing season for them outside isn't really that long and we haven't done it before. So if we make a mistake the first time around, we want to be able to do it again. Uh, so not the mistake. No, 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 not the, not the mistake. We want to be able to try again. Or, you know, if some wild animal picks the lock on the cover and gets them, something like that. It's April 1st and it's yesterday so we had our first day that actually felt like spring on March 31st. It was a beautiful day. I got outside and I finished some cattle panel fencing. We'll talk about that later, but oh, come say hi. Hi. Say hi to everyone. You can't see them, but they can see you. How can they see me? Through the camera right up there. Oh, I hey, don't know. You want to share everyone your teeth? For lack of teeth. You keep losing teeth there. <laughs> he even pulled some himself. He pulled his last one himself. Just yeah, it means I don't have to do it. All right, you need to get a jacket or something. We'll it's get a, a little chilly, okay? Aww, Say yeah. bye-bye. We'll bye-bye. See you later. Okay. Go on. So anyway, it's still a little chilly. So yeah, our, our season is definitely a little bit shorter, especially like this year. Last year, year was just short. Last year, last year it was, was short. We only had three months between our frosts, uh, June fifteenth to September. 15th. And we had a frost this morning. We, uh, yesterday still, morning, yeah. There was a. Well, was it yesterday? Oh, it was yesterday. Okay, yesterday yeah. morning. So. So we'll have frost until probably the beginning of June. So I'm really interested. One of Period Dude's suggestions was breeding tails with some other. <laughs> um, dual purpose birds but the other they, birds might not like that very much and and see what happens the variables in this we don't know tails is huge so there's that but we don't know how long it took him to get to that size um he is a blue orpington which is a dual purpose bird but i i don't know i'm not sure we we might try that down the road but we also need to put up some chickens too quickly so here's what we're doing finally right Last night, I decided that we would be ordering Cornish what Cross. Joint, what was a joint decision? Yeah, Cornish Cross, Cross, um, the Jumbos. Those are your commercial... The freaky chickens. Franken chickens, right? Yeah. 25 of those. 25 Cornish Roasters, which is a slower-growing uh, breed. Uh, well, I don't know. AKA they, more normal. They, they, they take about two, week, two, two weeks longer to mature than the Cornish cross, the, the monster ones. So, it's like, what, so they have less mortality issues, less health issues, a little slower growing. They don't have the leg problems. And, um, but they still give you a large breasted, you know, your standard chicken that you're looking for. It just takes a little longer to get there. If you tell them, of course. And then oh, lastly, and lastly, 25, Freedom Rangers, which is, um, I, I, I was almost going to say heritage breed. They're not, I don't think they're heritage. Maybe they are, but um, they're a hybrid, but they are, I guess they are heritage, aren't they? Well, if they're not a hybrid, they're a heritage breed. Are they a hybrid? They're a hybrid. Then they're not a heritage breed. Okay, well. Maybe. They're heirlooms. Anyway, they, uh, whatever they are, they, um, they are they take about the same like nine to eleven weeks as the roaster does um but they are your classic homesteading uh chicken uh, they're slower growing but they're really good at foraging they act they behave like a normal chicken they go around scratch um they're really good for small scale operators that aren't looking for a real quick turnaround so here's what we're doing we're getting 25 of each um the the way the shipping worked and the availability worked, we're getting the the Red Rain, the Freedom Rangers and the Roasters at the same time, and which will be the week of April 10th. Soon. That's next week. And then the Monster Birds are coming the week of May 1st, which is three weeks later. And there's like that two to three week, um, what do you call it? Uh, I guess delay in, in the development of the others. So um, we're going to actually be getting to harvest all of them at the same time, theoretically, based on, on the numbers, how they're playing out. And um, what we're going to do is monitor every day the weight gain of the birds. We're going to take a sample population from each category. We're going to try and raise them in 
as much similar conditions as possible. This won't be completely a scientific experiment, but it'll be as scientific as we can make it. And just measure the daily growth rate, feed consumption, mortality, any kind of health issues, anything like that. And at the end have like really compelling data, I, I hope about, you know, who's performing better for a cost analysis for mortality issues there. I know there have been studies done before like this that will show, yeah, you get a lot faster growth and better feed conversion from your Cornish cross, but your mortality rates are a lot higher. And especially at big scale, if you're running thousand plus birds at a time, the you actually come out ahead using the slower bird because less of them die. So uh, it'd just be interesting to see how our results are and how they compare to, um, I guess, the industry results. Oh, you got to be careful not to bang that, okay? <clears throat> so, so yeah, that's what we're doing with the Cornish uh, or the uh, meat birds this year. And, and let me check back in over with the comments here. Looks like we got some. Um, Let's look in there. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this right. Sinai, 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 psychopath. Sinai. <laughs> Sinai. Just go by uh, Sinai. Hi, Sina. Uh, she she wants to know if or he um, wants to know. <laughs> Sina, that's a very clever name. If we don't win the book, are we able to purchase it? Of uh, course, yeah. um, it is going to be for sale. I think it's available now for sale. Actually, um, I'm pretty sure. I will I will find out for you guys. I'll give you the links to the site. But I think it's it just, if you go to estheremery.com right now, if you just want to check, it's, I, I, I'm sure available. Let's see if we have any others down here. <laughs> Lindsay Duvall, wrestle with the ethics of supporting the industry that created the Franken chicken. Okay. <clears throat> Sutton's days, I look forward to your results. We didn't have a high mortality rate. Lost one in 50 about every year. We have them, but I like the roasters act more like regular chickens mm -hmm. yeah that that's that's the general consensus what we're hearing and um originally the plan was to get the fast ones first we would actually get them all at the same time and then in about seven eight weeks harvest the frankenbirds so we would have chickens put up right away and then a few weeks later do a second harvest but the hatcheries were not available to deliver them all at the same time. They were, the Cornish ones were April 30th, 30th or May 1st was the soonest we could get them. So that's why we broke it up that way. So it makes a little less sense that we're even getting them, <laughs> I guess, because of that. So we're, since we're just doing one harvest, but it'll just be interesting to, to see. The if it goes well, variance. maybe we'll do another harvest. Oh, maybe Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's definitely on the table. That's definitely. Let's see what other yes. people are saying. Okay, Sutton's Days is saying, yes, Esther's book is now for sale. Uh, little Buddy is, is too funny. Esther? I don't know what that was. Oh, Sina is named James. James, that's a great name. Sorry, James. Sorry for butchering that. <laughs> if you change your name in your Google account, James, then it'll change on YouTube, too. It's kind of hard to change, though, and you can only do it a certain number of times per year. Um, yeah, and I we tree bonsai. I know. Um, M Mike was telling me earlier that you're pretty much uh, a professional moderator, so I just added you if that's okay. Um, what time is it at our house? It's four twenty-two p.m. Someone posted that question. Do you, I only have about eight more minutes before I have to meet dinner? Do we want to talk okay. about gardening? Yeah. So. Um, the next topic we want to talk about is is starting the garden. Starting the garden. I we're clear that just about everywhere else in the country, you know, you, seeds are already started and, <laughs> right. and stuff How are like they that. still in packets? Yeah. So yes. last couple of years, well, I, two years ago, I started a microgreens growing uh, business. I tried that for a little while. It went good at first, and then it didn't. And Anyway, so I did that for a while and then it just didn't work out. But I had all the, the equipment left over. I had the grow lights and this um, 
what do you call it, shelving system and all the trays and soil. So it was really great for starting our garden indoors. We did it when we were living in town. In a heated garage. In a garage. And we had a little cadet heater in the wall. The house we lived in was the model home before we were renting it. So mm -hmm. it had some upgrades like that. Heated garage really, is really nice. It was good for seed starting early. Nice for winter mornings when you have to get in your car. And that's not an option for us this year. Uh, we have no place. I was just walking around the house the last few weeks just looking, well, maybe we can fit something in there with some grow lights. And it's just, no, it's not realistic. So I talked to my dad about it. My dad has a greenhouse on his property. So he has offered us the uh, a space in the greenhouse. We just need to get the, the seeds germinated and we'll, we'll send them down Is he going to water them for us? Yeah. Oh, thanks, so we can't That's drive really down there every day to water. I just want to make stuff. sure. Yeah, so um, we already have the jiffy pots. We just need to get some dirt. We have the seeds. Now we're going to buy tomato starts. We love tomatoes, and last year mm -hmm. our garden produced hundreds, but we did, most of them didn't ripen. It was awful, and I also didn't really do anything yeah. in the garden for about six weeks um, because. Um, because we were busy moving. So this year will be different. Daniel built a really great irrigation system last summer. Very simple, very effective. We have great drip lines, really wonderful, very low maintenance. So we had several raised beds that uh, our friends gave us and we reconstructed in our yard. And we are going to try something new this year as well. So we're going to redo tomatoes and we're going to focus on the things we eat a lot. We're focused on just a few crops yes, and like, do them well versus a bunch like poorly. Yeah. So tomatoes, because we love them, um, as well as zucchini, because we really love zucchini. And uh, butternut squash, our very favorite, butternut squash. And a couple other things, probably some garlic, some onions. Uh, and uh, we are going to try sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes need to be really warm. It needs to be about 85 during the day for them. So we are going to plant our sweet potatoes in some uh, either containers or um, specific raised beds built for them so that they can't nice and warm. And we'll have to buy slips or make our own slips for the sweet potatoes. We love Japanese sweet potatoes. So we'll try those and then we'll buy starts for the, uh, for the tomatoes. But the other ones we'll actually start ourselves. So all the squashes uh, we'll do ourselves from seeds. Probably put them in a low tunnel pretty soon. Yeah, we need to order yeah, some cover polyfilm. Yeah. And we need Lots to replace of some of the polyfilm on the greenhouse. The chickens, yes. every morning when I when they see me coming out with the feed bucket, they get, excited. They get really excited. What do they do when they get excited? And they, they start flying into the door. the door of the greenhouse, and it's it looks like Freddy Krueger just yeah. shredded it now. I mean, it, it's not frayed, but there's slash marks going down it. So. Oh, look, it's Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Stacy. Um, pests. Oh, um, moles in the ground. They're really the only ones. We don't have an issue with bugs. We have tons of grasshoppers, and the chickens ate a lot of them. Really, the only pests were these little moles that burrow in the ground and drive us absolutely nuts. Our yard looks um, like small landmines went off everywhere. When, whimsical Wonder Farm has asked about Japanese sweet they are potatoes. Phenomenal. And we we, we just ran them. out yesterday nice and they they have a, a light purplish skin and a white interior flesh and they okay so if you roast them with a an orange sweet potato the orange one has more of a caramelized taste when it's roasted all the way through the Japanese doesn't get that that um, darker caramelized flavor. It's it's really hard to describe. It's, it's more fibrous. The, the Japanese well, if you roast it longer and at a little higher temperature, you, it actually gets creamier. It it gets a very creamier te texture to it, and it's definitely sweeter. So it's it, it's um it. if you're trying to watch your sugar intake and you're on a low carb or anything like that, it's definitely not one that you want to do with frequency because the, the sugar content is a little higher in it. And when you roast sweet potatoes, it goes fairly high glycemic index. Whereas you, you, you read a lot about in sweet potatoes and how they're, oh, they're low to moderate glycemic index. And that's true if you're, if you're making, uh, if you're boiling, boiling them and making mashed potatoes or if you're, um, 
using other preparation methods, but if you're just roasting it, the, sh the sugar content, um, the starch gets converted to sugar big time in it. So, um, but anyway, so it's a sweeter tasting one. There are hands down our favorite. Yeah. Uh, we love them. Someone made a question. Do we have issues with slugs and snails? We really don't. And one of the reasons is that the summers are pretty dry here and uh, in Georgia. Oh my God, the slugs are everywhere. It's awful. They even come in the house just to we don't have them here, thank goodness. Yes, I see another comment from Marie. Cats do kill moles. There's sort of a wild-ish cat that uh, took out a couple moles, and and you make a good point. Our other concern, though, would be that cats would go after little baby chickens, and we don't want that to happen. Marie is one of our viewers from France. Oh, my gosh, it's so late there. Marie, it must be 1.30 in the morning for you. Wow, thanks for joining. So, um, was that everything on the gardening? Oh, we're planting some herbs too. Basil, dill, fennel, mm, fennel and carrots, so good. And a big role with the, with the herbs, the culinary herbs, is that they are scent confusers for insects. They put off um, aromas that what cause the insects to not, it repels them or it confuses them to where they are less likely to attack their neighboring plants, such as um, tomatoes, stuff that you don't want to attack. Yes. So. Huh, I did a good job with my time zone conversion. Didn't Thanks, Marie. Marie. Back. Yeah, yeah one thirty. Right. Good. Smart. Math, simple math. <laughs> Well, geography. how many people in the U.S. know what time it is? Well, I do a lot so. of international business, so I'm mm. always always doing the Latin American time zone conversions, which are fun. Love my Latin customers. And, uh, and Welsh Harlequin is here, who is um, a freelance writer, and she's in Colorado. <clears throat> yes, marigolds are really good too. They're actually great at uh, deterring the problematic nematodes in the soil. Mexican marigolds, not all marigolds do it. Mexican marigolds plant those. Basil and tomato are really good symbiotically planted next to each other. Uh, growing well, like that companion plant. But basil stuff. and cucumbers apparently shouldn't go together. I was reading about it. Someone asked a question about turkeys. We have a turkey. <laughs> we have one. We have a name turkey. We want to name her something with a T. And our friends. Okay, David I've been and, thinking about this. It can't be Tina because our friends no, no, David no. and Kim have Tina, and we don't want to steal their name. Okay, so I've been thinking about this, and this is something that. What should we name? Her? We haven't discussed. <laughs> should at we all. name the turkey? Well, first we need to explain the turkey. The turkey. <laughs> Poor it thing. started like a week and a half ago. If if you guys saw the video, I think it was okay. It was the one where is my hen broody? I think it was that one, which I guess was right around a week and a half ago now or so that I did that one. Maybe just over a week ago. Yeah. Ooh, in that video, there was a turkey wandering around the, the chicken corral or the chicken yard, and I started filming it. I was like, oh look, we have a visitor, a turkey, and I was gonna put that in the video, and I can. I don't know how, but I must have skipped over in the editing process because it never made the final cut. And I wanted it in there. It wasn't like I deliberately omitted it. And uh, the next day it was back. And oh, the next day. It's not an it, it's a she. Yeah, I think it's, it's a hen. The dark head is a she. <clears throat> so this went on. And she's, she's been still back. here. She's, it's been three weeks. She's been here every day. Here. She hangs out she walks out, just around. outside she's the chickens. Protecting. She patrols right around their corral all day long. And then in the evening, right at dusk, she Flies looks, into the trees. looks up into the trees, not right behind us, but a little bit further over that way. And she it's one of the really tall ones, uh, Cottonwood. And she goes all the way up to the top. I didn't know turkeys could fly so high. I mean, she flies way up there. She perches and then comes back down in the morning. And I... Maybe I would leave a little chicken feed for her once in a while because you know. Her back over. Okay, I'll bring her back over. Does so. anyone have any good suggestions for naming her? No, no, no. We were getting to that. I have a name. Oh, you do? Talk. No, she's a girl. I can't get this back over. Yeah, there, there we go. Okay. Tabitha, that's a good option. I like that. Trish. I know a few Trishes. I don't know if they'd like being compared with a turkey. So the turkey. Can you? Get out my do face. That? Thank you. The, we could call her Tinsley. The turkey reminds me of a peacock that used to live on the property I used to live on. Do you, oh, have I ever told you about yes. the peacock? Okay. This was, what year is it? <laughs> Something. This would have been oh God, yes. a, 13 years ago. 13 years ago, I, I, um, 
I had a roommate and we moved, we were in a, um, we played music together. We used to write and record music mm -hmm. and, and um, be in bands and all that stuff. Anyway, so we rented a house on my cousin's property way out in the country. They had 18 <laughs> acres, a huge pond, ducks. It was a really cool setting, especially since we had just come from it, close to Atlanta, where it was much more urbanized. And so it was really neat. And we thought this would be a really great environment where we could write music and, and, and play and all that and not disturb the neighbors. And uh, so, so we moved it out there and on the property flew in a peacock. It was a wild peacock just flew in and stayed. And uh, it was mating season for the peacock. And because there were no peahens around, he would call for them constantly and it made this awful awful horrible noise every morning it would wake us anyway kind of like our rooster kind of like the rooster but Except it was you can't eat the peacock. louder and higher pitched mm -hmm. it was really unique sound oh look marie's going marie thanks for joining uh, au revoir so the that wasn't very good sorry so anyway we wound up naming the peacock what did you name the horace oh and this turkey reminds me of that. So I was thinking of something similar to that. You should name her Terrence because he was and also I, a great Roman I came poet. up with Haggis. <laughs> she protects the chicken. I guess oh, Haggis. She puts it. And it's, it's, it goes with the sheep theme. She can be named Terrence. <laughs> Terrence the turkey. We'll name her Terentia, the great Latin name for Terrence, because she doesn't know that Terrence is a guy's name. And back to my roots. Latin poets. Virginia knows who Terence and Horace are, right, Virginia? Right, Virginia? Virginia not. Virginia. Come on, go ahead. Robert's giving a thumbs down. I'm assuming that's on thumbs Horace? down to Ashley's suggestion, right, no. Robert? <laughs> we'll call her Terry. Terry for short. Terry the turkey. Let me check back over and see if we have any Facebook have or questions from Mike. If I can find that tab again. Here it is. Uh, yeah. Let's go back up. I think you go down a little. A cat? What do we think about getting a cat? Oh, Marie asked that. I am allergic to cats. We are not getting a cat. Um, Portuguese prepper mentioned um, sampling the taste between the different broilers yeah, that's, a really good that's point. another thing we'll do we'll definitely do a side-by-side -side cooking comparison i was going to do that with because in the fall we had some leftover cornish cross from the gentleman amiable acres rob our friend he raises the chickens for us he had cornish cross no. his second to last batch and um the Frida last batch Ranger was the freedom happen. rangers and we were going to do a side by side and i but what wound up happening when i got home i threw them in the freezer and they all got mixed together and i haven't been able to really tell i haven't been able to identify oh this one's a freedom ranger oh this one's not so i don't know we'll have to do a side by side um whimsical wonder can't wait to see your your gardening videos we'll definitely have them soon hopefully if the rain recedes um the cat, yeah, we were. Um, the rain. We have an outside cat. It's not ours. Yeah. It patrols in our property. We don't know whose cat it is, or if it even has a home. But it looks well fed and eats moles. Slugs. We already asked. Got that one right. Are you getting turkeys? Okay, so you already saw that one. Yeah, um, uh, but to answer your question, we're not gonna. I don't. I don't know. I. I we kind of thought about. It. We talked about it last year potentially getting some for Thanksgiving. Um, oh yeah, Tur wait, well, turkeys. Maybe we'll see how it goes with the chickens. Yeah, um, we have small. to order them fairly How soon long um i want to say it's seven is it five months or seven months i don't remember but we, but really it, we, we need to get on it soon if we're going to do it um yeah or pigs uh yes, yes. We're, we are we're gonna our pigs are imminent we have we have a deposit on them i really want to get them here the snow's all gone now at least on the, the half the property that we're using now it's just a matter of getting some fencing up. I was thinking today, you know, I can go get the pigs now. And then I thought, wow, you know, last night the coyotes were going crazy. Right? Like, yeah, you were already asleep, but um, it was really loud with coyotes again. And I you just, we just need to get the fence so we can get the dog and then we're going to bring everybody Yes, home. the dog. There are a lot of questions about the dog. I have to go make dinner now, but you should answer the questions about the dog. Hi, everyone. What are you, since I, I have the roast in the oven, so what are you making? Potatoes. Oh, you're just doing the potatoes. 
Yeah. Okay. That's just good for Japanese. It's in the trip. The hog that we slaughtered in um, at our friend's farm two weeks ago now, I guess yeah. that was. Yeah. Um, I have yeah. the ham in the oven roasting, uh, and Ashley's going to do, I guess, the sides for it. So the last thing was the fencing. Um, Mommy, don't forget check on the ham. I was going to mention the, the situation with the fencing. Last night, I got the fence posts. They were delivered, and we unloaded them and got them all set up. And... Uh, you can use this to check it. It, it looks like it's going to rain tonight. I'm just looking at the clouds. It's pretty overcast. I think it's in the forecast, the rain. It's supposed to rain, I think think for several days this next week but then it's going to clear up towards the end of next week so it's really going to be weather dependent our ground is so saturated with water it's just it was really easy putting in the t-post for the cattle panel fencing but um it's just not a good time to be putting in the wooden posts with the ground being so sloppy so hopefully by the end of next week maybe i don't know it's just going to depend on how the ground and how the ground holds up. So uh, once we get the fen the perimeter fencing in, um, we're going to be bringing, getting the dog, the the breeder. I haven't talked to him again since the last time I mentioned it in the video, but just in case you guys didn't catch that, the breeder, I spoke with him not too long ago, and he's doing, he's in Billings, Montana, which is quite a ways from here. And so he does quarterly traveling all out to this region and, and does drops dogs off all along the way as he goes uh so we, we're kind of getting in line on the schedule for his next run which i think is going to be next week so i mean not this this coming week in a few days but the following week so uh that's all coming pretty fast so hopefully we can get it all worked out all right guys have a good night thanks for joining us and uh we look forward to sharing getting 2017 finally going here hopefully in the next couple of weeks so all right take care